Hi everybody and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. This one is dedicated to my animal rescue, Kennels of Compassion Animal Rescue, and within the rescue is a program called the Desert Cats Program. My rescue also has a Tumblr account, which is a blog site. Um, there's also a Facebook page and then a, pro a web page about the Desert Cats Program. So you can find all of that stuff, all the information on that, as well as links in the description below. Also below is a link to my main YouTube channel, which is uh, pretty random. Um, some of the videos have to do with animals, some are my animals doing weird or funny things, so it's pretty interesting, um, just very random, so don't expect anything specific or don't expect a uh, theme of anything. Um, what this video is about is actually about the Russian Blue. If you're a cat lover, you've actually probably heard of the Russian Blue before, you may have even read about it somewhere in a magazine or online. The reason that I want to talk about it is just because a lot of people think they know what the Russian Blue is, but they really don't. Um, the Russian Blue, it is an expensive cat, typically. Um, of course, you can find purebreds in the shelter, and as well as in rescues. Um, there's rescues that dedicate themselves to specific breeds. So there are all sorts of German Shepherd rescues, Pitbull rescues, Shih Tzu rescue, Pomeranian rescues, and even cat rescues like Siamese, Maine Coons, all sorts of stuff. Um, and again, you can find purebreds in shelters as well. So I'm not saying it's impossible to find one in a shelter or in a rescue. It's just not very common um, with the Russian Blue because it's not a common breed. So, a lot of times people think because you have a blue cat that your cat is automatically a Russian blue, but that is not the case. I recently had a cat adopted, her name was Mirage, and she was entirely blue and she also had green eyes. Both of these are traits for a Russian blue. So people were automatically texting me, contacting me, saying I would love to adopt your Russian blue. I had to constantly inform them, I'm sorry, she is not a Russian blue. These are the traits to look out for when you're actually looking for a Russian blue, and if you're still interested, please continue to contact me. Um, now, the reason I find it so important to educate people on what breed characteristics are is because, and the perfect example is the pit bull, mislabeling a breed is very dangerous for the breed. Shelters are constantly mislabeling pit bulls. They constantly say, this is a pit bull, this is a pit bull mix. Because of that, people think they actually do have a pit bull, or they think they know what a pit bull is because they saw one online through a shelter and it said it was a pit bull and their dog looked like it, so they start saying their dog's a pit bull. Well, a lot of the times these pit bulls aren't pit bulls at all. They have no pit bull anywhere in their lineage. And it's just sad because, let's say, this random dog, the total mix has absolutely no pit bull in it though, it's a shepherd slash lab mix. It goes and it attacks somebody. The media reports that a pit bull mix attacked a person. That just adds to the bad rep that pit bulls we all know already have. And they don't need that. Unfortunately, shelters, for whatever reason, do not educate their staff on characteristics of breeds. And something you may not have known, there are over 20 breeds that are commonly mistaken for pit bulls. Over 20, that's a lot. Some of them are purebred, and then there's also the mixes that people just think are pit bulls, but are actually a mix of entirely different breeds. So it's just important to educate yourself that you're not mislabeling animals, and because of that, you know, the word spreads onto the next person, the next person, so on and so forth. Same thing goes for the Russian Blue. You don't want to tell people you have a Russian Blue because then they think their cats are Russian Blue, or they think all cats that are Blue are Russian Blues. So the traits of the Russian Blue, I have um, them written down actually, just to make sure I didn't forget any. Um, the first one is they do have to be solidly blue. But not only that, it's not a flat blue, um, kind of like a, a non-bright blue. It's a very shiny blue color. So they also have a double coat. What this means is their, their fur is very thick. Um, there's double coated dogs. Uh, for example, the Husky, the Alaska Malamute, Chow, those are all double coated dogs. So these are animals that have a very thick, sometimes very fluffy fur, and it's actually pretty bad to shave them. Um, I also have a video for that that you can check out. But um, back on topic, these Russian Blues, they have double coats, and you'll notice the top coat, the very tips of the fur, it's shiny. It's kind of silvery on the tips. So that's something that all Russian Blues have. If you have a blue cat and their color is kind of dull or it's a flat blue, I'm sorry, but that's not a Russian Blue. It's just a, a mix or it's an entirely different breed. Um, there are so many different breeds that can be Russian Blues, or I'm sorry, <laughs> no, there are not many breeds that can be Russian Blues. The Russian Blue is a Russian Blue. Um, there are many different breeds of cats that people mistake as Russian Blues just because they can be Blue. Um, and then also mixes can be Blue, of course. And then the domestic short hair, um, commonly labeled as the DSH online with shelters, rescues, things like that. They're the most common cat. Um, it's usually just a mix, and a lot of times those can be blue. Like Mirage, she was just, she could have been a Russian blue mix. She did have some of the Russian blue traits, but she definitely did not have all of them. Um, one of the other traits is they do have to have green eyes. Now Mirage did have green eyes, and she did have the blue fur, but her fur, like I said before, was just a flat blue. So it needed to have that shine to the coat, and it did not. 
Another trait of the Russian Blue is they will have blue pads on the bottom of their feet. So, like I said, the whole cat is blue, except for the eyes, I guess. Um, they also have a blue nose. They won't have a pink nose or anything like that. Um, making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, think? Oh, nope. Two other traits, and these are facial traits. Their ears are going to be long and pointed. So they have, if they have short ears or if they have rounded ears, those are not Russian blue ears. And then another thing is with their snout. Their snout needs to also be pointy. Um, some people might consider it long and pointy, but it just, in general, it's pointy. It doesn't have that rounded muzzle like some cat breeds do. Um, so yeah, those are all traits of the Russian blue. If the cat does not have all of those traits, it is not a purebred Russian blue. So if you are looking into getting one, please make sure you do your research. Please make sure you go to a reputable site. There's all sorts of different sites. Um, there's, you know, sites that are dedicated to pure, purebred cats, and they'll not only provide information on the personality and physical characteristics, but also pictures. So if you're looking into getting a Russian Blue, make sure you compare pictures. Um, if the cat is a kitten at the moment and they only have kitten pictures, make sure that you immediately ask to see both of the parents, not only in pictures, but when you go to see the cat as well. Because the person can easily get two pictures off of Google. Sure, you may have looked through the first five pages of Google, but what if they went to the 30th page to get their picture? I mean, people do that kind of stuff all the time to make money. Russian Blues can be extremely expensive cats. Another thing, if you are trying to get a purebred animal, I highly suggest that you look for a purebred animal that has papers and is fully papered. Um, both the mom and the dad, or the dam and sire, some will call them, need to be papered in order for the kitten or the puppy to be papered. If you're looking to breed animals, it's extremely important that they're papered because, as I said before, you can get purebred animals in the shelter and in rescues, but they're not papered. So it's kind of pointless to, you know, breed a purebred animal if it doesn't have papers because somebody can go to the rescue and save that animal's life, and it's the same thing. So um, just some ideas, some advice, and hopefully you don't get scammed, and also hopefully you can pass this information on to others and just educate other people on exactly what to look out for when they're looking for a Russian Blue. Alright, thanks everybody, and um, also make sure that you check out my other videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, and then like I said, I have a main YouTube channel, it's extremely random though, but hey, if you're into anything really, check it out, there's some really funny videos including my own personal pets as well, some of the rescues as well, um, and yeah, that's it, have a good one.